First of all, I want to just say to all of you that the weather is beautiful out there, and I hope it keeps up for a while, it keeps us a little on the dry side. Oh, which brings me to the meeting tonight. On, let's see if I read this right. On March, Monday, on my way into the eye doctor office at 11.25 a.m., a Walmart huge truck came right through that light, headed north. Uh, again, I object to that. <laughs> Why can't he take off at Kerman Heights? That's his business. But I'm still saying it's not right to come through. Particularly when from 11 15 to 1 15, it gets a little congested. A little, it's um, also, I was trying to get across Washington Avenue Saturday morning, going from the north side to the PNC side, um, same side. Anyway, the lady kept trying to get across, almost didn't make it. That light almost needs five more seconds to give people like us time to get across. Um, that's one of the things that bothered me. Uh, also, I'm still urging council and PennDOT put in the left turn at Chartiers, Washington and Chartiers to go out Chartiers um, before some terrible accident happens there or a couple bad spots that a lot of us visitors are not happy with. Uh, fortunately, most of them are on the other side of the creek. Uh, also, I want to urge you people to put pressure on PennDOT for heaven's sakes, put that highway across from Upper St. Clair, straight across, and people eventually will end up on the toll road, uh, the new 43 or whatever it is. But that will get some of the traffic out of first world. If they come and come in and spend money, fine. If they're just going through, yeah, let Upper St. Clair take care of it. And leading up to Upper St. Clair is the one that really bothers me the most. Saturday, March 27th, I was a passenger in my niece's car on McLaughlin Run Road. At our line, the field looked great, except for the work that they were doing in here. The minute you crossed that line, I haven't seen that kind of debris since June 21st. I'm sorry, all the way to their new tennis courts. It's awful, and I think that Pressure should be put to bear on whoever. Get the trees and the branches and everything out of there. Get it cleaned up. It's just a little run right now, but a very dangerous thing in the future. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Chase Speck, please. <coughs> Jay. Uh, I noticed that the park here with the gazebo. And a lot of dog feces there in the borough. Did you have to clean that up at one day, Bill, on a Monday? So they can tell you how much, I mean, it's out of hand. Uh, maybe if they can adjust the camera from the library, because the people that are doing it live on Station Street, okay, in the apartments. And they come down and let them do sit. And, Keep on walking. Okay. Um, she stole my thunder. I was going to comment on that. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. something we need for like a, like a pet cleaning station? Well, no, they need to clean. I walk. I don't know what I'm saying is put a garbage can for so they, hey, if you're going to bring yeah. your dog down, at least get off the road. Well, these people ain't carrying bags. I walk my dog. I carry right. four bags with me. No, I understand that. What I'm saying is have a thing there with bags. If they're going to come and they don't bring bags, hey, we have to yeah, you know, a lot of parks do that. So. And, uh, then uh, another thing, I want I live on Maple Street, and they put that wall up like in Glory Pictures. And I was just curious, is there any council member who drove down to see the progress? So, you mean the wall that they put on no, the it, it was on my street. They had an outside contract. I was just curious if any council member. I did. Okay. <laughs> well, what's your opinion on that wall? 
Well, I saw again, it was high in one a couple spots and, and dropped down in so front of my why. property, 35 feet. Okay, in front of my house, nothing was done. But they go 75 feet beyond my property, and it's dead end street. And the analogy the engineer gave was if the wheel's not broke, don't fix it. There's a three to four inch curve there, and it's in Gabian basket. Okay. And me being a flood victim, had to replace my furnace three times in two and a half years. They had the opportunity, as they was coming down, to do it, and it's done. You people don't have to fudge with it anymore. It's done. But apparently, the Lord told me tonight, she's going to have Mr. Bott come down because the borough did do part of it and they did a good job. And we, there's four houses on that street that get flooded. Now the people on the other side of the creek, they put a levee up. And Bruce, you know that. Okay? So now that water, which I don't, hey, protect your property what you can. I can't go out and pour a levee on the street. But now that water is pinching and it's coming back. Okay? So you put a levee up, I'm getting the back washing with it. And I was just curious because being a council member and knowing you was the only one, and then uh, Bruce seen it six months later after I kept asking him. So I was there at the same time we were putting the Anyways, uh, I don't know. What's what's what is the pro, what's the purpose of council members if you don't try to run the community and see what's going on? You have to, a council member here that you have on the books what that ordinance there is for what your property should be, and his looks like crap. Okay, and he and it's the last house on the right by the bridge. There's not been a resident in there. For 30 years, 25 years. And I physically, visually seen rats going in it when I walked my dog. And at this end, I won't mention names, but the guy sells appliances on Main Street Bridgeville at 521 Baldwin Street. There hasn't been a roof on that building in 30 years. 30 years there's not been a roof. And the problem is the people that don't have the money to fix their properties get letters. And the people that have the money, they got the power. And it's not right. If you're going to set ordinances, obey by it. Go by what you write and preach. And I had some more stuff that my time's up. Thank you. From the property maintenance, you guys just don't get it. Matt Smith, please. Uh, I live on Wall Street Extension, which is in the 800 block of Power Hill Road. It's kind of like the, the low spot. And over the past year, year and a half, there's a considerable increase in triads and dump truck traffic up and down Power Hill Road. The problem is they keep running with their jake brakes on. And they get off their accelerator right around Cook School Road. Coast down through that belly area and it just rumbles something fierce. I notice that more whenever I'm laid off in the wintertime. Of course, everybody's in their houses, their houses are all buttoned up. Summertime's coming, so it's going to sound even worse. I looked it up and they said that we collectively can file an application with PennDOT. I don't know if they're going to cost anything. County. Well, Allegheny County up to um, the Blackman Run, and then that's not Allegheny County. That's Allegheny County. Yeah. I just looked it up as to who who governs or enforces the uh, use of brake retarders and being able to put signage up. They said you have to uh, file an application with the state. 
have to meet certain criteria. There's seven criteria so far. Power Hill Road right there meets all of them. It's residential area. Right. That would be something that we. Yeah, it is heavily residential. Are we looking at that? Yeah, it wouldn't be for Pim. No, no, it has to add it to now. You came with a bus there at this whole time. Yeah. 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 Where you live, you know, they're. You're running to the Morgan Ray Country Center. And the. Them trucks are also, they're all speed going through. Yeah, because the speed limit is 25 miles an hour. There. So yeah. they're coming up over the hill at 40 and then hitting the Jake brake to get down to the speed. Oh, well, they're even, yeah. even going outbound towards the other same thing. Yeah. They're all on the dirt hole loads. Yeah. And you know, it doesn't take much. You know, a lot of people back out of their driveway and mm -hmm. they can't be clipped. Sure. The problem is, police can't really enforce it because. <laughs> Truckers are going to be on their CB talking to each other. Right. All of a sudden, they're all going to be doing 23 miles an hour through there yeah. until mm -hmm. they get out. So, yeah. I just wanted to see if something could be done about yeah, that. We'll, we'll, we'll all right. Okay. okay, thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, Bob Fryer, please. Yes, thank you. <coughs> um, I want to talk about two subjects briefly the flood, solutions to the flood, and also the traffic congestion problem. Uh, this, as you know, is the plan that was recommended to the Bridgeman Planning Commission and you guys about uh, making the Baldwin Street area a floodplain, making the creek bed serpentine, and, and eliminating power to road uh, from the that's cement. The, that is not the plan that was, that was recommended. Yeah, that's it. No, that's your plan. No, no, you're wrong. That's the plan. And this is the actual plan that was recommended. That's, that's the plan that was recommended. That isn't the plan. The plan on the top is not the plan that was recommended. Well, well, I disagree with you. But anyway, that's okay. My point was, my plan uh, indicates mm -hmm. that the expert uh, wants to turn the Baldwin Street Business District into a floodplain rather than having mm -hmm. a floodplain Rather than a flat plain in the 20 acre area of Upper St. Clair Township on land that's taken. Okay. But I wanted, what I'm curious about, the last time I was here with the Planning Commission, and some of you were present, uh, the chairman, when I asked the chairman why they uh, favored, recommended on to you this plan, which I think is this plan. By the way, if you take this more carefully, there were just mentions of this that I corrected. But anyway, uh, who first recommended the company that did this plan for us to bridge? How did they get invited? Who uh, were you going to ask? You know what? It's their profession. Yeah. They do that. But how did you pick, maybe, maybe, how did you pick that firm? <clears throat> yeah, we had a quote. We, we did a profile. Did, did you advertise in the newspaper or something? Or? How long ago? Now we may have asked for a quote from them as they were working on other comprehensive plan matters. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, professional yeah. services. You think I think I don't hold me to that on the top. Five years ago. Did Gateway? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did was? Do you think Gateway Engineering recommended? No, no, no nothing. Not even anything to do. Yeah, I got to do because I was going to say that firm, uh, a very competent firm. They've been uh, a subcontractor in front of St. Clair Township for yeah, 15 that. years. You know, that, 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 that for me, it, environmental planning design, is that right? works for virtually every municipality in Allegheny County well, well, on a regular basis. That, that, that's good. But so so you, you so mm -hmm. they were selected arbitrarily, not arbitrarily, with, with some thought not recommended specifically by Upper uh, St. Clair or Gateway. I know that's actually contrary to everything that was said right in the last minute. I didn't want anything to do with any recommendations by. Uh, oh well, that's fine. Right. Yes, yeah. no, that's fine. I, I, I agree. Fuck up. I, I agree. Uh, what I wanted to show you, what I was concerned about, was the uh, the planning commission chairman said that he was under the impression that the Baldwin Street Road, at least that one. 200 foot section of it was unstable, was being undermined by uh, uh, undetermined water sources, either the creek or elsewhere. What I wanted to say. <coughs> not Baldwin Street. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I meant. Uh, 
Bar Harbor, yes. But I wanted to show you this. Um, about a week ago, I went up on the bluff street and I took photographs of all of the downspouts from just the first four buildings on Bluff Street, and all of them have been uh, disconnected. They're running out onto the lines. And uh, the, uh, de determining the size of the uh, roof drains, uh, you're talking about it's all together. Those four homes alone, you know, a roof drain is like a funnel. The, 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 those uh, uh, four homes are generating a, a pipe that has a capacity five foot wide that's flooding water over the hill onto uh, Bowerker Road in that area that we seem to have to be having a problem with. And, uh, excuse me, that's in addition to the 70,000 square feet of lawn, grass, and surface area that's doing the same thing. And what I also did was, this is, excuse me, these are the uh, these are the four homes. You, you, you certainly understand that the arrows indicate the direction of the flow, and uh, the uh, I contacted uh, I tried to contact uh, Gateway Engineering about two months ago to get a good copy of the study, but uh, they uh, just like said he was told that you guys told him not to talk to me, so I had to file a document information. Uh, thing to get this study. But what I wanted to show to you on the study is the, the places where they bored were obviously where the biggest problem was here, and then that we bored to and bored through The results that they got were, were not indicating that the sub base was greatly being uh, undermined by water. It indicated that uh, that, uh, that when you look at the number of downspouts that are flowing on, onto that property, uh, that seems to be, in my opinion, what the real problem is. And the other thing that I think you can notice next time you drive down there, when you get into that first, those four, four homes area, the area from the edge of the road kind of is 10, 12, 14 feet. But as you move further up Bluff Street, the area over which the, uh, the water has to uh, go it's much along with so it would be absorbed, but it would be, be much less damaged. And the other thing that I wanted to mention to you was uh, last week I spent about a half hour with uh, the, someone from the Federal Highway Administration. Who was that? Who bought? No way, I'm not going to mention the name. Of course not. <laughs> not, not you don't want to hear it, Bob. Well, do you want to, actually, I was so enthusiastic about what they told me. I came, I rushed down to the council, to the borough building, and wanted to talk to Lori, but she was too busy. I called two other times a few days after that to tell you what I understood was good news. I got to return calls. The, the, to make a long story short, sure, sure, excuse me, uh, the Highway Administration and FEMA gave me two bits of information that were misstated here. Uh, the, the last time, uh, I think we were talking about a uh, the area between McLaughlin River Creek and, and Baldwin Street being made a, a, a 400 car parking lot. You, you guys were talking about permeable water surfaces. And I think there's a, there's a, a legislation or something that uh, in floodplains, FEMA will pay for 80 to 90 percent <coughs> of the cost of tearing down the building in the floodplain if the floodplain is transformed into grass and trees. We're working on that process right now. We're working with property owners right now on that. Well, let, me, let me tell you what the guy from FEMA told me. I asked I him, can you I've been working with him. Well, I'm glad to hear it, but I just want to tell you what he told me. I asked him if it was Bob. If you don't tell us who the guy is, we can't contact him. Maybe he can help us. But we can't. Uh, if I get permission from him to release oh. his name, I'll be glad. Oh, well, that sounds ridiculous. I'm well, sorry. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the common sense should be informed me of. Why he can't you he, give us his name so we can check on him? It's Tilly Bob. 
<laughs> Excuse me. He mentioned that the requirement of having the uh, the area in which they help uh, in town buildings. We're actually in the middle of working with residents of Baldwin Street That's that right. I, yeah. I'm going to talk about today, this evening. Right. We're in the middle of the process. That's wonderful. And those so, are really kind of trade secrets. The Lord is well familiar with them. I know, I know what you have to do. And federal with the, and state with government the and so and what, well, I, I know all this. Okay, well, if there's one thing you don't know. Okay. I was under the impression that FEMA had the requirement that any area in which they buy a building or pay for 90% of it, it has to be uh, redone as uh, grass, trees, as conservation area. If you get permission from FEMA to use it for another use. That's exactly right. Oh. And they think oh. oh. <laughs> so, Wait, you said she doesn't know. She get 200 or 400. He said, she said that it's up to the... Uh, I thought you said I didn't know. That's not the very good part. Or that's okay. Uh, the, the point is, you, you can... You, if you get, uh, he said that the local. Bob, enough. I know. I mean, you, you're saying something we're already doing. You're not bringing anything new. Are, are you going to have the area? First of all, I'm assuming that you aren't taking another step toward implementing a plan that uh, that plan is presented to you by the expert. Right. Okay, if you do, that's insane. We haven't brought it. Good. Like, I know you haven't endorsed the planning commission's recommendation. But my point is, you can transfer the area between, if you leave Barger Road where it is, and leave you walk on the, uh, the crick where it is, you can, through special permission, right. transfer the area between there and Baldwin Street into a 400 car parking lot. Do you agree? Or are you going to try to do that? That's what I'm asking you. Bob, I'm not, I don't know what we're going to do with that, but I know it's something that we understand that we can use that piece of property to mitigate the flooding while providing green space and parking. It isn't going to be a 400 lot parking. Okay, 50% of the area turned into parking. Exactly. Fine. You would definitely want to use some of the parking. But you also want to make it look nice with a park well, well, and, and, and maybe lowering so you have some place for the flooding to go. Well, I, we I, were aware of this. Okay, well, lowering it's not going to do any good. The other thing okay. you do with the Federal Highway Administration says. Yeah. Uh, no, you can, uh, uh, no, I want to finish my comment. Then, then you can tell me enough. What? I can tell you no, I can stop you right now if I want to. And, uh, and I can sue you next no, week. You can't. Can't. Also, Lewis, I'll accept yeah. service if you wish to do that. You're about 15 minutes on a three minute uh, dissertation. I want to finish. I want to finish. I'll tell you, when I came in here to tell Laura, <laughs> when, I wanted to, when I came in here to tell Laura, I wanted to tell her, she refused to see me two times. All right? My point is, the Federal Highway Administration says the only way you're going to get billions of dollars to rebuild your central business district is to do something aggressive about solving the traffic congestion problem in Bridgeville, Collier, and South Bay along the Washington High Court. Until we stop exhibiting the same thoughts that my, my friend who I love doesn't know what she's talking about very wise about detouring consumer motorists around the community, which caused the collapse of the business district, which caused the doubling of taxes to people. You're going to get out that plan. With three, three areas, 200 yard extension of Shady Avenue, the bridge over, the railroad bridge over the uh, thing, and the Baldwin Street thing making a two way couple. Just, that, that's my final comment. Thank you for letting me do one more moment. Craig Valentino, please. Excuse me, by the way, that's the real Yeah, why? It was, well, it was okay. I'm not official, I'm not going to use it. I know you are. Mystery guy. I can call the ball. Stop back and fall. Watch it. Uh, I think it's easy to fall. <laughs> um, yeah. you, you know, uh, I think I'm uh, kind of familiar with some of the history to what's going to like uh, flood issues. So we have a year almost gone by, and that flood issue is still burning in everyone's heart. Okay. So my, my two uh, uh, points here are number one, 
has any action been taken by anyone in council <coughs> to do anything about the retaining wall plan? Yes. Okay. Can you please yes. tell me what it is? You explore it? <coughs> Behind our team. Yeah. Oh, well, the, yes. Actually, it's actually been on my report. And the reason why we have a new corporate with that is we are in the middle of um, uh, doing RFPs for engineers. The, uh, the, uh, NF, the, the yeah, RFPs. Where are RFPs? RFP, RFP. Request for Proposals for Engineers. Um, they were due on Friday. I actually provided all of them to the council for review. And we'll be doing interviews. Um, once we have a firm, um, in hand, um, then that is one of the first things that you're going to do. Um, as I said, it's been listed on my report, and I have it on my report as being on hold because I can't start it with an interim engineering, um, which is what we have right now. We have an engineering firm to just do the basics until we get a firm in here. Um, so, if it is from my understanding of this, then the engineer agreed that that's the point that should be, uh, we should give attention to? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, and we... That's, you, want, you want to put that wall just like you suggested? Yes. Okay. And uh, we wanted, we didn't want to start that with an interim engineer. And if, you know, then not just work with us, and then we have to transfer all the information. Okay, thank you. Do you think that uh, that's possibly going to get done? Within a year, or we're two? planning on um, doing some projects this year. Okay, because we're going to borrow time here. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Second point, um, we received. I received a letter from Lori on the back of the Lori. Mm -hmm. So, is that project completed on Walden Street? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And how many back of the did you put on Walden Street? I mean, how many? Uh, um, I started? think there were. <laughs> yeah, they're around 15. I would have to count them. Okay. But it's um, approximately 15. So what's the report back? Have they have they worked? Have they We haven't um, I haven't gotten any calls since they were put in, so okay. apparently they're working. So and they start to function the work we right. we haven't had a rain to use them yet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now yeah. I have one installed no, from not, this no, no prior to that. And I still had two inches and three inches in my basement. I appreciate that what these do, and we don't have an engineer in doing those details. Well, probably so the the they're the going to stop <laughs> one <laughs> avenue of water coming yeah. out through your pipes. They yeah, you're going to get it no matter what. Yeah. They don't stop it from coming through your right. fresh uh, drains, or right. your yeah. foundation right. drains, etc. Et 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 Most of us will take that trail. Yes. And, and when the water out front is a foot deep on the streets, obviously it's. Yeah. And hopefully we'll, the wall will prevent that. So what's the scope, uh, the time scope for that, Lori? Well, um, the backflow, the surveys were, are due back to me, I think, April 17th. And then what we will do is we already have the specifications because we already did phase one. So I will be able to hand that to the interim engineers because it's not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. And um, we will be able to bid um, for how many um, that we'll need to install during this phase, of which I'm getting a lot back that already have them, so I don't think there'll be as many this time. So if you, already have, if you already have one, well, like I had, I had one installed 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Is this version better than the one that was 15 or 20 years ago? Well, what this version is, is it's that they, they're, they're putting them in, in different places, um, conducive to um, where the lateral um, enters the main. We're, they're going into the lateral because we have to, we're doing agreements with the property owners because the lateral, of course, is their property. So they're, they're <coughs> in where the lateral, um, lateral enters the main and into your pipe a little bit. And of course, what that does is it lets your sewer water out, but it doesn't let the, the any uh, Overflow from the sanitary sewer in it blocks it. So um, it they looked at different types of backflow preventers and felt that this one was the best one and it required the least maintenance. But the property owner is going to be required to maintain it after we put it in. So it's outside the house for 
Yours is probably inside. It's inside the house. Yeah. yeah this it's is outside. outside. This, this is, is outside, outside. outside yeah. like in the sidewalk. Yeah. And it, it goes down. It has a big cap on the top of it. You take the cap off. You pull to maintain it. You pull the, the valve part up and they clean it and put it back down. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice setup. Yeah. Because the racks will eat that flat. <coughs> you have to watch that too. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Matt. Choice. Good evening. Um, my purpose tonight is to find out what um, the borough and the neighborhood can do about the blight on at 730 Bank Street. Uh, it just continues to get worse. Um, I, briefed, I ran into Bill at a social function and um, he said there has been some action taken, but what? I mean, I've thought about even getting a petition together as neighborhood, but is this is this the kind of guy who's going to care if we get a petition? He's right? not. And what I did actually it was last week. Oh. I sent him a different letter than I've sent him for every year, twice a year, gone to the magistrate, did the minimum that he had to do, and then it just got worse again. Mm -hmm. So I sent him a letter telling him that because I felt that his property is becoming a public safety issue. Mm -hmm. The borough has the, the power to go onto the property, clean it up, and then we'll go to the magistrate and he'll be charged for, okay. you know, because it doesn't do me any good to send him letters. And it doesn't do me any good to send him to the magistrate. And it doesn't do any good to find him because he doesn't pay. Oh, he doesn't pay. Yeah. So, so, so what, what's your, like, what is your next step? The next you, step you, is for me to, me to send our public works department. But the borough won't get reimbursed for we'll that either, right? We'll lean it. So, oh, okay. okay. I decides okay. to sell it, then yeah. we'll place a lien on it. Okay. Um, because what he's done is, you know, he'll just do the minimum required. Yeah. He never cuts around the house. Um, and then yeah. he gets tired and leaves the lawn in the middle of <laughs> um, the 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 porches were yeah. and actually I'm going to send the building inspector up because the house is uh, as far as the structure of the house, especially mm -hmm. the porch is mm -hmm. really bad. Mm -hmm. So the that's that's the course of action I'm taking now. Okay. Because it would take our guys probably two hours to right, and right, right. It, it would just eliminate such a mess. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. But I tried everything. Okay. I tried everything. Okay. Or correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that the first thing that I'm going to manage to Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, that makes me feel better um, that obviously you you have it under. You have it under. Well, I tried. <laughs> you did. Yeah. That's what worked. Do we, okay. have, do we only have statutory um, like activities to try with this person? Have you tried anything compassionate? Is the guy sick? Is he old? Is no, he's not sick. Not he's not old. His no. kids hate it. Is his mom ill? He lives alone. Yeah, he and and he's about in his, what, 40s maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, he indeed. just, I mean, we, we went over and we took a tree down because school children walked under that tree. So we took it down because the bus stop was there and we were afraid it was going to hurt the kids. So we tried um, to do things. Um, to be more compassionate and just say, okay, we're going to do this because we know it needs done. Some people are just trying to yeah. Or don't care don't what don't their home Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck, Joyce. Uh, John Duncan. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just calling about uh, Warner. Warner Avenue, the uh, hillside. We it's actually, getting worse. We actually uh, applied for a CITF, that's Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund Grant, um, for um, the stabilization of that hillside. Uh, it was a $294,000 grant that went, went in in January, so we're hoping to hear soon. <coughs> fingers crossed that um, we hear something. If not, we're going to have to fund it. But we're hoping that we'll get the grant to be able okay. to do that. Yeah, so. because with wet weather coming, it's just, yeah. just washing away worse and worse. Yes. And then, uh, I don't know if he, the engineer, I can't remember. Joe. Joe yeah. he, he was still going to try to get a hold of the railroad. Like, they have not done anything down there, like, as far as dredging or cleaning up along the tracks. Right. Yeah, from 
trick all the way up to the bank. It's very hard. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And, yeah. Lori has a contact, and she can. We have very little compliant right. jurisdiction with them or those sorts of things, yeah. but uh, he says she does have the local yeah. manager. Mm -hmm. Is the it, two railroads different? Like Pittsburgh and Ohio Central is that one. And the one well, on the Okay, so you have to put your two different railroads. Yeah. Great. Regarding the minutes of March 11th, uh, 2019, regular meeting as submitted. <coughs> uh, Bruce Carducci? A second. Will Henderson? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2019-02, motion of the Borough of Council regarding resolution number 2019-02, resolution confirming that the Bridgeville Borough, South African, and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, FEMA applicant agreed to participate in the FEMA hazardous hazard mitigation grant program. The borough and FEMA agreed to acquire real property voluntarily from owners and demolish hazard prone structures restricting the land to open space in perpetuity. Uh, following all guidelines of the grant program, uh, surveys were sent to Baldwin Street property 11 responding work to be completed on the grant is ongoing with the deadline of May 21st or May 24th, 2019. This is the one that we were talking about earlier. Yes. Uh, Bruce Gallarucci. Um, and Virginia Schneider. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, <coughs> all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number one, green light go grant adaptive sign upgrade. Motion to the Borough Council regarding the remittal of current estimate number one in the amount of $57,731.27 to Launder Technical Services Incorporated for the bid documents requiring 50% of the cost of equipment upon delivery. The Green Light Go grant was awarded in the amount of $213,328 with a funding match earmarked in the Capital Improvements Fund by the Borough of $53,320.50. Costs in excess of the borough share are refunded by the state. Yes, sir. Uh, Nina Picciali? Second. And Joe Klossman. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, employment, assistant to the borough manager position. Uh, motion of the borough council for the recommendation of the administration committee to hire Cheryl Bullwack, Bullwark, I'm sorry, to a full time position of assistant to the borough manager. One will begin on April 15, 2019, at starting salary of 48000 per year with benefits provided by the Union Agreement. A comprehensive search was conducted through website, indeed, and municipal junction for individuals with background in the municipal field. Background in the municipal field. Uh, Bruce Gallarducci? Second. And second by Joe Cosmo. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, proposed ordinance, fire department reimbursement of material and service costs. A motion of the Borough Council authorizing Solicitor McDermott to research and prepare an ordinance authorizing the Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department to obtain reimbursement for the cost of materials expended and services rendered in fighting fires and rendering emergency rescue services. Uh, the proposed ordinance will be provided to Council for review prior to requesting authorization to be advertised. <coughs> Yes, sir. Chief, what's approximately an average expense for not a huge fire, but just a tall one? Um, we just had one. The purpose of this is commercial and commercial vehicles and commercial buildings. We've been billing already for accidents and that we have a company that does it. We just did an accident where we get reimbursed for our time and UC just stopped them. One accident was brought back $13 for us to help recoup what we did. So this ordinance is under the commercial end, is what we're looking for. Pennsylvania requires that. If we don't have that, we can't bill for those services. And it only gets billed to people with insurance. We yeah. also go after the homeowners or the business people if they don't have insurance. If they have insurance, it's you pay for your insurance. So 
the insurance companies pay. Yeah, exactly. So it's not going after an individual or an individual owner of a business. Thank you. And in fact, as the Chief's alluding to, some of the ordinances that we'll, we'll see that we've seen around, they actually put that right in the ordinance. Yes. That he said. Yes, and that's what we're looking for, too. That it's only if it's insurance reimbursable and not directed, unless there's a voluntary yes. desire to reimburse on the And everybody here, pay, you pay this in your insurance. A lot of people don't know it's sitting there. Right. I'll move. Okay. Who, uh, who, who, who was the first motion? I'll move. Joe Rucci is second. And Bruce Garucci. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Bill List, motion to borrow comments regarding the April 2019 bill list. I'll move. Joe Rucci. Second. And Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, payroll. Uh, motion to borrow council approving the payrolls of April 12, 1926, and May 3 and 10, 2019. <coughs> uh, Bruce Gallarici. Second. And Regina Schneider. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carried. So, monthly reports. Motion to accept the March 2019 real estate tax collector report. Like one point. Yes, sir. Um, there is one accident. Uh, we received the 2019 report of one of the items in her report. We just need to get that update. All right. I'll move. Okay. Uh, Joe, we have a second. Second. And uh, we have Danina. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the February 2019 financial report. I'll move. Uh, Joe Rusi. Second. And Nino. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the March 2019 police report. So moved. Uh, Bill Henderson. Second. And Nino Petricelli. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. And motion to accept the March 2019 zoning report. So moved. So moved. Second. Bill, <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Committee reports. Uh, Bruce. I don't have any. Uh, financial reports, Joe. Um, really, the uh, only items that uh, were normal expenses this month, uh, we did have a little bit of uh, uh, the tree removals and things like that as a major expenses, but uh, other than that, it's pretty normal. Um, still looking to collect some of that 18 tax uh, dollars that, that are still owed. April, so I'd like to see that. Uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, yes, sir, uh, we're resting on the uh, rest restoration down in Chartiers. They had a slight issue with the uh, electrical system going in down there. The conduit evidently got full of muck in the sky and crap from the flood. <coughs> We had to send our electrician down to clean up the conduit and get the electricity going, so hopefully that will get up and going. Get down in time for the start of the baseball season, I hope. You know, public works people are going around the parks, picking up all the winter debris, the branches and whatnot fall off the trees, and there's some dirt and whatnot. I know it's on the sidewalks and spot on the uh, Parking lot by the water fountain by the big field is like about 20 by 30 feet. <coughs> it's basically mud. So we're going to have to get in there and put some stone or an asphalt patch in there. With the, the guys were down there. They combined a couple of weeks in the concession stand on the water line. They were fixing that the other day. And there was one in the uh, Chartier's one uh, restroom. They were fixing that up. So the park could be pretty good to go over the next week or so. Uh, walking around, I noticed the gentleman said about the dog feces or whatever down in the super league down in the uh, gazebo park down there. It, it was, I saw a couple spots of it when I was down there, so I was suggested I think we probably will. I'll ask that we get the, uh, the dog cleanup station. It's like a little wooden thing with the uh, plastic bag and a little garbage can there. Hopefully, people will take care of it on their own if I can find or whatever. 
Another thing I noticed walking up and down Washington Avenue, it's been like this for years, that we put the planters in on Washington Avenue, and there's no debris, but there's like hundreds of cigarette butts. Mm -hmm. And they're a pain in the butt to clean up, and people are just hard and crazy pigs. Take your cigarettes and they throw them in the things. There's not a darn thing we can do. We could try and clean them up, but it's just a pain in the neck to clean up. So I just ask. Everybody out there, if you're smoking, don't put your cigarettes out the car. You know, don't drop them there. It looks the the work we did there. I think it looks nice. The flowers are growing and whatnot. You got cigarette butts and whatnot in there. It's just uncalled for. So, and last but not least, the deadline for the newsletter is this coming Wednesday. So if you've got stuff one in the newsletter, do it in the bar or do it today. That's all. Thanks, Jim. Uh, public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, it's a, uh, as usual, normal work if you do uh, sewer and uh, catch basin. And I know they were on the park today, Joe, I don't know if you know or not, some problem with the electric. Uh, I think they took care of that today. Yes, yes, yes. yes we know that. I'm just saying. I was seeing something else. Because <laughs> I checked on my public work. Good. Good job. <laughs> Nobody got hurt. Ah, with water know. and electricity, that's yeah. a bad situation. Normally they shut the electricity off. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, the brush, cleaner, the grinder, the wig cleaner, through April. A lot of people not to put this stuff out okay, through April. Street sweeping through April. May to September, third full week of the month. The schedule is on the borrow website. There many other things there that we can end it. Uh, it would be good to go on that website. That's the real website that the borough offered. That's our website. So I encourage you people to go on that. And other than that, Mr. Chairman, I don't know anything. Thank you, Dino. How much did you sleep with, Joe? Uh, public safety, Bill? Yeah, Mike, just one thing, and uh, I'm not sure, probably have all seen the celebrity that has become the Bridgeville Police Department. And, uh, I missed it, man. <laughs> and and I, I, I say this tonight only because they did a very good deed, and they didn't do it for this reason, to be recognized like this. But yes. people outside of our community recognize what we have, and uh, we do too. And for that, Chief, I, I won't pile on. I just wanted to say thanks to you and, and the fire department for what you guys um, did to, to help build the morale in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Very good job. I mean, like, reach 300,000 people. A couple million. Yeah. Yeah. For the record, a couple million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> this is National Library Week, April 7th through the 13th. And we certainly are thankful for Ben and his staff and volunteers and for Cindy and friends of the library for promoting use of the library and supporting the library with annual fundraising events. Also like to remind everyone to support our farm's final fish fry on April the 12th and 4th to 7th. And we have Rag Talk is open and this past weekend uh, the rail yard celebrated with their days of grand opening and today we were also fortunate that the Blaze Italian Steak House has officially had their grand opening today. So let's support all, all of them. <coughs> Unfortunately, the chief was kind enough to pass along the card to me <coughs> to read to you. Everyone knows that we made the news because of the officer going down on Union Street, buying the kids playing with a recycling can and an old soccer ball trying to play basketball. So 
the story is that, that they got the basketball stand and all that they needed to play basketball. And one of the children was kind enough to send a thank you note. And it says, Dear Bridgeville Police and Fire Department, thank you very much for the basketball hoop and really appreciate it. We enjoy it very much and thank you. Sincerely, Mike Deaver. Thanks to the officer, <coughs> our chief. They also played a game with the kids. Yeah, and Ray Costain delivered <laughs> the basketball. Yeah. So, thank you so much. Who won the game? The yeah. Mayor, there's, there's a rumor going around, though, I heard. I heard you're throwing the first pitch again this year. I'm looking forward to it. My son tells me I need to start practicing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to let us know when the first pitch is going to happen on the court. April 27th. Oh, it's already April 27th. All right. All right. All right. And I hope everyone will have a blessed Easter and happy Passover. And I just have something I'd like to read. It says, How greatness comes. A person's greatness can't be hid, but shines in many forms. Sometimes it comes through sunshine days, sometimes it comes through storms. A person's greatness is revealed in many, many ways. Sometimes it shines when we are cursed, sometimes it's when we are praised. A person's greatness may be seen when fame his name adorns. Sometimes it comes in other ways, for Christ it gleamed in forms. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Please, Chief. Thank you, Council President. Uh, the only thing I have is that the multi-jurisdictional food drive wrapped up. I collected all the food from our local boxes on Saturday, and I'd like to thank everybody that put a donation box in their business. And this Thursday, the departments will all meet and make the delivery of the food goods to the food bank at uh, at Bethany Presbyterian Church. Thank you. Uh, um, thank you. I have nothing to add to our. Uh, Fire Chief, we'll show you. Thanks, Mr. President. We do have a, my report, what we did last month. Uh, just to let you, everybody know, we've been kind of very busy so far this year. And hope it slows down. Nothing in person. But uh, also, this week's our last fish fry. So make sure you come down. And then also, we got coming up is our cash bash. That uh, is the big gathering for everybody in virtual in May. May 4th is the date we have taken, so if you need them, stop down. Thursday nights are the best nights to stop down the stage if you want to get them. Or just give us a call. Somebody's got my number now. And, uh, a couple of us are going this week. We're leaving Wednesday to go to Indianapolis for a big fire convention. It's a worldwide Seattle. event, actually. So we're going out for some training and that. Okay, you leave? Wednesday morning. We'll be on the road at 6 30. So, but as I was saying about the calls, this dish, uh, we had one this, today, and today's call was 108. We're up to already this year. So, we're only just did that eight ball. So that's all I got, brother. And right. thanks for the support from everybody. Please keep it coming. Uh, Historical Society, Mary. Thank you. Not in my pen, not twice. Get them circulation going. Thank you. Um, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, over at the old railroad station, the old library, will be the last time that we will hold Bridgeville High School history. It is the year 1960, which was the last year that we did have a high school within the bounds of Bridgeville. We are expecting a big group there because their yearbook in 1960 was outstanding in that they went back all the way to 1920 or 23 and listed every person in every class. So we're expecting a big crowd and you're all welcome to come. Get there early. We're ending up parking in a lot of other places. Thank God that there's a lot of business going on in the town, too. Um, in addition, we are still selling old history books 
that libraries and schools did not want. We're selling them for a dollar, a dollar each. So far, we've had three teachers come in and buy over $300 for They prefer to have those at home for reference when they're teaching. What can I say? We're still selling them, by the way. Uh, we are very, very excited and very pleased that the Heinz History Center is coming to us on April 30th, which is a Tuesday night at 7.30 down at the fire hall. A woman from uh, there, and as a matter of fact, I have her name here. Uh, her name is Emily Ruby from the Heinz History Center, and she will pre be presenting the Destination Moon uh, Dash Apollo 11 mission. Now, I know they've done this at schools. I don't know that they've done this anywhere else, but they're coming to Bridgeville, and we're very excited. We want you all to come to the fire hall. And, and enjoy that with us. The history that we get down there, uh, the six students who heard Benjamin Franklin taking notes and all <laughs> it was amazed. Their eyes went big, their mouths all over. They had no idea that he was, what, number 13, 14 out of 15 children. Anyway, interesting stuff. Um, does anyone in your family think we are looking for people to bake goodies. We are having our semi-annual bake sale the week, right a few days before Mother's Day. If you need a Mother's Day gift, uh, it will be Thursday the 9th and 10th, uh, this Friday in May. Uh, and uh, we need people to bake, but we need all of you to come by. And uh, we hope you will do that. Posters are forthcoming. Um, we also are starting work on our day on the avenue, which is June 15th. Uh, we have some new volunteers who have a lot more pep, pep <coughs> yes, yes they do, have a lot more pep than I do. But again, you're always invited. Please stop in, see what we do, look at the stuff that needs to be done, and you'll realize that we're coming apart at the scenes already. But we like what we do. You all are invited. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Uh, you want me to make a parking lot for you? Uh, what? <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Library. There's a question with the library. I had so many notes from the historical society. I went right down to <laughs> Good evening. Ben Horn, Beck, library director. Um, as Mayor Copeland mentioned, this is National Library Week, so it's the perfect time to come and see you all. Um, in honor of the celebration, I brought you each a book. Um, this is a busy time in that we're getting things wrapped up from 2018 and moving forward with 2019, obviously. So we just submitted our state report that's due every year. Um, this, is a, this is a formal report. I'm not going to give you guys a formal report, but I'm going to give. Uh, I just wanted to share a few of the big numbers with you. Um, at the end of 2018, we had 3,948 registered library card holders. We circulated 90,734 items. Um, we have a total of 21,781 items physically in the library that patrons can check out. And then we also have 432,000 ebooks that are available for circulation as well. Um, in 2018, we offered 896 <coughs> programs that were attended by 10,934 individuals. Um, I also have for you just a brief um, overview of what we've accomplished so far in 2019. Um, this mainly relates to um, our day-to-day -day operations to give you an idea of how many people are coming in the library as far as using the computers, acquiring items, and attending our programs. I'll pass that down as well. Um, it ebbs and flows from month to month, but I am happy to say when we look at the 2018 report compared to 2017, all of those numbers have continued to increase. Um, not huge increases, but increases are increasing, so we'll take it. Um, also, we recently welcomed a new youth services staff member. Um, our youth programs continue to be our most well received consistently week to week. Um, so in that effort, we have a new youth services person. And then we're also in the process of hiring a youth services staff member 
We will focus specifically on outreach to the community and bringing programs both to our community and to South Fayette. Um, as you know, we have a partnership with South Fayette, so both these positions we're able to develop with um, that partnership and will benefit both communities as we see a lot of overlap in the patrons who are coming to both libraries. Um, finally, at the end of the month, um, we do have some fundraisers coming up. Uh, the friends of the library were kind enough to order to organize one of the glazed pizza nights. Um, we just had one recently at Chipotle as well. Uh, it was well received, so we have one coming up on Wednesday, April 24th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Glazed Pizza. And then right after that, the Friends of the Library are also um, doing their spring book sale. That will be Thursday, April 25th through Saturday, April 27th. It's a bag sale the whole time. There's going to be lots of great books. They are busy every single week um, organizing those books and getting them ready. So I encourage you all to stop down and visit. criteria of the FEMA hazard mitigation and property acquisition grant is that I just go over um, with council at a public meeting just the criteria, how, how it's working, where we are in the process, and what it's due. So um, initially we sent out surveys. Um, we started with Baldwin Street and uh, to households that may want to participate in the property acquisition process. Um, we received approximately 11 surveys um, that were returned to us of potential candidates. And uh, I have been meeting with most of them. A couple of them I sent the paperwork to them and they sent it back to me. But most of them have come into the borough building, sat down with me, and we fill out the paperwork together. Um, there's one more form that has to go with them to fill out, and then the next step will be the appraisals. Um, so, as far as the criteria for this grant goes, um, it, it um, cannot be commercial properties. It can be rentals and um, private residential properties. Um, it's totally voluntary. Um, the property owner um, um, comes into the program um, at any time in the program. If the appraisals come back and they're not happy with it, they can withdraw. Um, the homes are appraised at pre-disaster value, um, not at post-disaster. So if they weren't able to afford to fix their house, if they didn't have flood insurance or that type of thing, um, that doesn't count against them. Um, what will happen will be if they did have flood insurance through the NFIP, um, which is through FEMA, and they received uh, monies um, for their losses and they did not utilize that money for repairs, then when their house is purchased by FEMA, the monies that they, that they receive will be deducted because that's double debt. And as we discussed and as we talked about with Bob, um, the original criteria is, is that the property stays green space through perpetuity, but you can apply to FEMA to do some reasonable things with the property, and as long as you have their approval, you can do other things with it. So that's where we are with that. So uh, as I said, the appraisals are the next step. Um, the, uh, the grant application, the entire packet has to be in by May 24th. Um, my target is to get it in the second week of May because we're able to send it to Pima first. They're going to review them, and anything they think that we need to tweak or add or left out something small or that type of thing, they'll kick it back to us, we'll fix it, and then we'll send it back in. So um, we're moving along quite nicely with that. So I actually had two applications. We had to send a letter of interest. I'm going backwards. Letter of interest had to go into FEMA and they had to approve the property to move to the next step. And I attached the properties that wanted to um, participate with that application. There were a couple that came in late, they're called subsidiaries. I am able to include them 
um, because I've had a couple with the NFIP issue and they don't want to have those monies taken off their purchase price, so they decided to step up. And so far, we're, we're at eight, we'll probably be at 10. So if anybody has any questions regarding the process, what we're moving along with that process. Thank you very much. I sent them to all the properties on Broken Street. Uh, also, we'll see this <laughs> there's one thing that I'd like to mention because I saw um, there, there um, were some comments regarding us losing the grant of McLaughlin Run. We did not lose the grant. Um, the grant is, um, is alive and well. Um, we have to um, we have to move forward and, and um, complete the grant by December 2020. I would like to hold off on bidding it right now because we're planning on doing uh, lowering the field and putting the trash rack in, and those trucks are going to have to go through where we're going to be doing the upgrades. So timetable-wise, it, it makes sense to do, do the uh, ball field and the trash rack, and then move <coughs> maybe a spring 2000, um, 2000. But if we do the field earlier, we might be able to fall. I, it just depends. And that, I'm done now. Right. Old business. New business. Motion to adjourn. Motion to Bruce. Second. Chair, all in favor? Aye.